Hi, everyone. We are on our last lesson for the chapter, okay? We are going to focus on slope and equation of lines. Specifically, just today, we're going to talk about slope. So I'm hoping when I said slope, that's a word you've heard before from Algebra 1 last year. But I know it's been quite a while, so hopefully some things I'm telling you, are your, I'm just kind of reminding you, and I'm not completely teaching you if you've never heard the word slope. But let's just kind of dive in and see what we do and don't remember. So in a coordinate plane, the slope of a line is the ratio of the change along the y-axis to, axis to the change along the x-axis between any two points on the line. We use the letter M to represent slope. So a lot of times when we think of slope, we say the words rise over run. I think on um, one of your homework assignments about two weeks ago, I put some finding slope on a coordinate grid on like the bottom. Hopefully you remember that. But anyways, here is your slope formula. Okay, so we have two points here. I shouldn't have done that. We have x1, y1, x2, y2. And here's our slope formula. So really, folks, all we're doing is we're taking our y coordinates, subtracting them, and throwing them over the difference of our x coordinates. So that's why we get a ratio, because remember, a ratio is just a fraction, or another way to think of it is your rise over run. So on a coordinate grid, it's pretty easy, right? It says find the slope of the line given. Line given the graph, oh sorry, that sounded funny. Find the slope of the line given the graph or the two points on the line. So when it's on a graph, it's easiest if you find two points that are on the corners. These ones are already given to you. So we simply just count. Remember, it's rise over run. So how many boxes am I rising? One, two, three, four, five. So five. Now how many boxes am I running? One, two, three, four. So our slope would be 5 over 4. And remember, you read a graph left to right, and it is increasing, right? It's going upward as you move left to right, so it should be positive. So that's why it's positive 5 over 4. And you want to leave it as 5 over 4. You don't want to put it as like 4 and 1 fourth, because that's not helpful when we're graphing lines. And you don't want it as a decimal. It's just easier on a graph to count up how many over how many. So that's why we kind of leave it as this improper fraction there. Okay, let's do another one here. So again, it's rise over run. So we're going from R to Q. How many boxes am I rising? One, two, three, four, five. I went up five and how many did I run? Well, I didn't run any, so it's zero. But now, can you divide a number by zero? Can zero be my denominator? No, you get like an error in your calculator if you were to type in five over four or five over zero. So if you don't have an as um, error slope, how we would say a vertical line, it's undefined. So a straight up and down line is an undefined slope. And maybe you want to show this work in your notes here, so then you remember which one's which, because you can always fact check this on your calculator, right? If I took five divided by zero in my calculator, it's going to say domain error. Error. So. That's one way to know. So crowning on a graph is pretty easy. Let's try it when we have two points, right? So we're told that there's two points on our line, 6, negative 2, and negative 3, negative 5. So I know it seems kind of elementary, but you really do just want to label those points, right? So I'm going to have x1, y1, x2, y2. Remember, each ordered pair gets an x and a y, so this will be like your first ordered pair and then your second ordered pair. Now we're going to plug in to our formula right here, okay? So again, we just match. What did I label as y2? Well, that's negative 5 minus our y1, which is negative 2, all over our x2, negative 3, minus our x1 of minus 6, okay? And now we just simply simplify, you guys. So negative 5 minus a negative 2, well, we really know that it turns to a plus plus negative 5, Minus, or negative 5 plus 2 would be negative 3. Negative 6 minus, geez, negative 3 minus 6 would be negative 9. And then you're always going to want to simplify, right? So if we look here, my negative over negatives, those are going to cancel. So we have 3 over 9. How do you simplify 3 over 9? Well, 3 goes into both, right? So you surely get 1 third. 
So positive one third should be your final answer there. Okay, let's try another one. Maybe you're feeling confident and you want to try this one on your own. So you can pause the video if you want just to see how it goes. But remember, you have x1, y1, x2, y2. And you just plug into your formula. So here we go. My y2, 3, minus our y1 of 3, all over my x2, 4, minus negative 3. Now we simplify. 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus negative 3 really becomes a plus of 0 over 7. Now, 0 divided by 7 is 0. You can take 0 divided by a number. You're just always going to get 0. So this has a slope of 0. And maybe, folks, you want to draw a little sketch. If this is like your coordinate plane, a slope of 0 is horizontal. So this is actually going through one, two, three, right here. So it would be this horizontal line. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. Okay. All right. Again, I hope that was kind of a review for you. I really hope you saw that in Algebra 1 and I just kind of reminded you of how to do that. Because now we're going to kind of talk about what we can do with slopes. Well, parallel lines, we know that parallel lines never touch, right? Well, did you guys know they never touch because they have the same slope? They're increasing at the same rate, so that's why they never touch. They're going up and down, or up and over the same amount each time. Perpendicular lines, remember those are lines that make right angles, have opposite reciprocal slopes. You may have heard this as negative reciprocals. I can like the word opposite better here, but you decide what you want to put there. And then we just have some examples here of what are opposite reciprocals. So I like saying opposite because if we look here, this is, I know it's hard to see that it says three fourths. Well, since that's positive, what's opposite of positive? A negative. And in a reciprocal, you guys, we just flip the top and bottom. So if we look here, it'd be negative four over three. Those would be perpendicular slopes. Okay, if we have a slope of two, remember two is really over one, right? So the opposite reciprocal of two would be negative, this is positive, then we flip our fraction, 1 over 2. Negative 1 over 2. Our next one here, negative 7 eighths. Again, this one's negative, so it's going to be positive. And now I flip my fraction, so 8 over 7. Again, remember 1 is really over a 1. This one's a positive 1, so I'm going to make it negative. So negative 1 over 1 which really we know can just be reduced to negative one. Oh, of course. Now the last one's kind of goofy. So we have a slope of zero and we just talked about a slope of zero is a horizontal line. Well, what's perpendicular to a horizontal line? I'm hoping you're thinking a vertical line straight up and down and a straight up and down line has what kind of slope? Yep, it should have an undefined slope. You could spell out undefined. I like to abbreviate it with U and D. But a zero slope and an undefined slope are perpendicular. And maybe, like I said, oh, sorry, folks, I'm kind of all over the place. I'd probably draw these pictures here. It's definitely helpful to have a visual. Okay, let's flip it over, okay? We have a few left. So what we're going to end with today are these last four. So determine whether line A, B, and C, D are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Okay, here we go. So what do we have to figure out? Well, we got to figure out what their slopes are in order to determine if they are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So there's my slope formula. And yep, you're right. The sign seems like a lot, but we got to do it twice. So I'm going to start with A, B. Again, I'm going to have X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So if I'm looking for the slope of AB, I'm going to try to be organized right here. Here we go. So Y2, so negative 5 minus 1 over X2, negative 1 minus 1. Simplify that. Negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6. Negative 1 minus 1 more is negative 2. If we simplify that, negative 6 divided by negative 2 should just be 3 or 3 over 1. 
So that's our slope for AB. Now we got to try it for CD. Again, x1, y1, x2, y2. So we have a slope of AD. I like CD. Here we go. So y2, 1 minus 2 over 6 minus 3. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. So if we look here at our slopes, we have a slope of 3 over 1 and a slope of negative 1 over 3. Yep, they are opposite reciprocal, so these would be perpendicular. Perfect. Okay, let's do another one. Here we go. So again, let's start with AB. X1, Y1. X2, Y2. Start with our slope of AB. Again, stay organized, it's helpful. We're going to have 0 minus 13 over negative 11 minus 14. 0 minus 13 is negative 13. Negative 11 minus 14 is negative 25. That doesn't reduce to anything. However, um, our negatives go away because a negative over negative is positive. So 13 over 25. Okay, now we're going to try our slope for CD. Here we go. So x1, y1, x2, y2. So our slope of CD, negative 5 minus 7 over negative 4 plus 3. Aaron Mosley to the main office, please. Aaron Mosley. So negative 5 minus office. 7 to give us negative 12. Folks, I put a plus through there to be really minus minus, which is plus, right? So negative 4 plus 3 should be negative 1. If we um, simplify that, that just gives us 12 over 1. So if we look here at our two slopes, 13 over 12 and 12 over 1, 13 over 25 and 12 over 1, anything special about those? They're not the same and they're not opposite reciprocal, so that would be a neither. That's a neither. Let's do another one, okay? Again, label your points, x1, y1, x2, y2. Start with your slope of AB. So we're going to have 2 minus 6 over negative 9 minus 3. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Negative 9 minus 3 is negative 12. Negative over negative becomes positive. Then how does 4 over 12 reduce? We should be getting 1 third, 1 over 3. Okay, we'll do CD, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Slope of CD, 3 minus 4, 2 minus 5. 3 minus 4 should be negative 1. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative over negative is 1 third. So if we compare our slopes, a third and a third, they're the same, right? So that means they are parallel. Okay, good work. Okay, last one. I encourage you to pause the video quick and then um, try this on your own so that you can see how you did, okay? All right, I'm hoping that you did pause it and I'm going to start it right here. X1, Y1, X2, Y2, slope of AB, negative 1 minus negative 3 over negative 2 minus 1. You should be getting what? Negative 1 plus 3 is 2 over negative 3. Okay. Try CD. So 3 minus 0 over 6 minus 5. 3 minus 0 is 3. 6 minus 5 is 1. So if we compare our slopes here, folks, negative 2 thirds and 3 over 1, anything special about them? They're not the same. They are not opposite reciprocal, so this would be neither. Perfect. We will catch up. Um, 
with notes tomorrow and finish these up. Thank you for watching. Please be good for the sub, and um, we'll see you tomorrow.